um, in my 21st year of coaching football. I've been a head coach for 16 of those years. I took over my first program as head coach when I was 24 years old. So, and this was Brandon Graham's senior year. You know, you can't mess that up. I mean, it made me look like a great coach, but I had, off of that one team, I had three pro football players, okay? But um, just a little bit about myself, I, I attended the University of Michigan. I um, earned my bachelor's degree. I walked on and played two years of football at the U of M. And then I saw myself and decided to put, put down, you know, the shoulder pass and helmet and to stay involved with the game through coaching. As a teacher by trade, coaching is the ultimate form of teaching for me. And the field just became my classroom. So um, once I became an administrator, which is what I'm doing now as one of the principals of our school, it's continuing to help young men through coaching after school hours. So um, that's a little bit about myself. I played a little bit of college football. I played four years of high school football. I'm from the inner city right here in Detroit. So I grew up in these same neighborhoods that these guys play in right now and um, try to continue to build those connections. Fortunate enough now that my son, and I've coached long enough for my son to be a freshman in high school, He's on our team, and these guys are his mentors. So it's the ultimate form of paying it forward. Coach, you did so much for us. We're going to pour that right back into your kid. You know, all of these young men I encountered earlier in their, um, their youth football playing careers, they came to me in the ninth grade, and, and throughout the course of the four years I had them, they became a part of my male mentoring organization. In that organization, we're teaching transferable life skills. We're teaching them to be accountable and responsible young men. We're teaching them to have a, um, a spirit of uplift, to want to help others, to be selfless, to think of themselves less and do more for the community. We're teaching them all of these things at an early stage in life. And now that they have their own platform, they want to expand upon that. Um, Brandon Graham, we've had since he was in the eighth grade. Uh, Tony Lippett, same thing, since the eighth grade. Cedric Lattimore, Desmond King, and Chauncey Golson are all NFL guys right now with a great spirit of coming home to uplift their communities, to help give back, to help bridge the gap from where the kids that are here now cannot afford all of these opportunities. And these guys remember the rigors and the stresses we went through um, on gas and go road trips where I'm just piling them in the back seat of my car and we're driving through Indiana trying to get to Notre Dame and then out to Iowa and Nebraska, burning up transmissions and then we don't have to operate like that anymore. We have a platform that we can do more and we can expand our reach to help more. So these guys have all made it a concerted effort to come back and be a part of those things. But that all started with planting those seeds when they were 13 and 14 years old. It's developing authentic relationships and in my communication with them off the football field, this has nothing to do with athletics and just talking to them about, you know, things that are going on in their life and their personal life and their upbringing and, and things like that. And once you get to know the individual, you will understand their limitations as well as their capabilities. And you will understand more about how you can help reach this kid uh, or how that kid can be reached by someone else if it's not me. Like I said, I don't do this all by myself. I have other coaches on my staff and guys that I know that can assist but we start with basic conversations, man. And we, we make them about life and about ways that we can help them achieve and, and just talk about goals and goal setting and attaining goals and things like that. And I think after having those conversations, they have to realize that, yes, the NFL is a dream. And that is our target and we're aiming for that. But if we miss, we can still be successful in life. And that's why you will see at this golf outing, doctors and lawyers and veterinarians and, and, and service members of the um, you know armed forces, everybody that's been a part of this program is having great success in life. And that was the goal, to build accountable and responsible young men.
you know, our goal wasn't necessary to build pro athletes. That's just a byproduct of what was we were fortunate enough to do. But just through authentic relationships and conversations, we was able to figure out uh, the game plan, I guess, to help these guys get out of their current situations and see past their circumstances. We have countless guys that we've helped. You know, I had um, one of Chauncey's teammates was a um, running back for us. He suffered a catastrophic uh, shoulder injury and was unable to play the game anymore. Well, we helped him get um, prepared to go to the United States Military Academy. He enrolled in Army at West Point um, and uh, has matriculated to the level of captain in under 10 years. And he's 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 a guy right now that's considering retirement in the next three years. Like. You don't have to work 30 years to get to your goals anymore. These guys are doing great things in way less time. And um, he took football and used it as a vehicle to the next level. You know, if we hadn't had a way to get him out to, you know, New York and to attend that camp at West Point so these coaches could see him. And luckily they didn't abandon him once he got injured. He was able to still go there and attend school and go through the rigors of being a part of you know, the military and, and earning that degree from West Point. None of that is possible without us instilling to them, you know, to be accountable, to be responsible, to be on time, to understand that rules apply to everybody, to understand that there are always expectations for what you're doing and always consequences for things that you can't get done. So those kind of guys are my real success stories those guys that have become dentists and veterinarians and things like that, that I'm most proud of. I'm very proud of my NFL guys. Most certainly I am. But those guys that played alongside these guys that didn't, that wasn't 6'5 and 285 like Charles. You know, those guys are, are just as successful and they are just as powerful to the young men that I'm working with now because those things are more attainable. The NFL, we know that's that's the one percenters. However, all of these dudes have the opportunity to achieve at a high level, and we just try to help them reach their goal. So letting them guys realize that your plan B has to be just as solid as your plan A. You know, at some point, football ends for these guys. And I know Brandon Graham is in his career and he was explaining to the guys via Zoom the other day, cause he still gets on once a week on Zoom with my guys, that I'm going to leave the game before the game decides it's done with me. I'm going to walk away from it on my own two feet. I'm not gonna let the NFL tell me when, when they're done with me. So I'll probably play another two years and then I'll walk away from this game. And then everybody is saying, well, when, you know, I would love to play in the NFL. He's been playing in the last five years on what he's going to do, life after football. Mm -hmm. You know, what am I going to do next? And he already has a plan. So he talks to them about their plan Bs. One of the first things we did once Chauncey was drafted was start to prepare him for life after football. And some will say, well, football hasn't even started yet. Well, we still need to be getting ready for what you're going to do when this thing ends. Hopefully you have a long 10, 12, 15 year career. But if you don't, the stepping stones have to already be in place for what's next. I didn't decide that until I reached the University of Michigan and talking in conversations with my mother, who is um, the ultimate, you know, um, provider, the ultimate help me you know i got those things internally from my mom um once i got to the university of michigan i saw that there was a need for guys to get back and help that next generation of athletes i saw a group of kids come to the university of michigan when i was leaving and none of them finished school at the university of michigan and they decided because at that time Coach X said that I'm not good enough to play, that I don't want to play anymore. No, you're great enough to play. You just probably can't play here. So before you give up on a game, let's find you another opportunity. 
And when guys started to transfer down to Ferris State or Wayne State or some Division II or even Division Three school, they fell back in love with football. And when I seen that that can happen, I said, let me help kids make better decisions. Because kids will make a decision based on who has the biggest stadium and the best uniforms or whoever's on TV every week. That's not the, everybody can't go to the University of Michigan. Everybody can't go. But there is an opportunity to play collegiate football for everyone. Once I help them guys get past themselves, and I learned that, like I said, once I got to the University of Michigan, I had a great group of mentors who would be speaking to the team, who would be working with the team, who were all former athletes to say, look, playing here is the absolute best. But so is playing at Wayne State University. Do you want to go to college or do you want to impact and play? So we had to help kids find the best fit. I learned all of those things through conversations that I had with my mentors in my time at the University of Michigan in the early. Carper Woods is a, um, it's a program that um, had not been successful in a long time. When I took over four years ago, Harper Woods had not had a winning season in 15 years, had not been to the playoffs in 11 years, and the last three years prior to my arrival hadn't won a game. So it was rebuilding a culture and a climate and a community. They were just used to what they were used to. And just gaining that buy-in took some time. But we're at a stage now where I think we, we, we got the ball rolling in our league. It's a highly competitive league. You know, we play in a league that has four of the state's top 25 teams in it. And then our non-league games are against three other teams that are ranked in the top 10. So it's a gauntlet. You got to play some real high quality football here. There are guys in our division that got as many as 15 power five guys on their team. You know, we play, we play some juggernauts around here. You know, so you got to be able to compete and play at a high level. It wasn't like that before I got here. Harper Woods was everybody's homecoming, and they played a very, very, very weak schedule. I decided to challenge us. I decided to schedule the absolute best that the state had to offer. And I told them, we're going to rise to this bar. And every year, we keep gaining momentum. In the three years we've been here, we make the playoffs every year. And the team is getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And this will be the first year since I arrived that we'll be a top 25 ranked team as well. You know, it took us a couple of years to get here, but we're here and we don't plan on looking back. You know, we're planning on continuing that tradition as we call it. Well, it was the challenge of um, once, one, reconnecting with family. The superintendent of Harper Woods is my coaching mentor. He was a football coach before me, and I was on his original staff. He went into administration, became the principal, and now he's the superintendent of this district. So he challenged me to leave the classroom and go into administration. One, I need your expertise, your leadership on a higher level. I was working with students every day. As an administrator, you're dealing with more adults. So that was one challenge. He challenged me to leave the classroom. Two, he challenged me to get outside my comfort zone. You know, I had been in my original league for 18 years. He said, you're the best of the best in that league. You're not, you know, when you're the smartest guy in the room, it's time to change rooms. So he challenged me to change rooms. And I accepted that challenge as the competitor and the person that I am. I was ready to roll up my sleeves and get back in on the ground level. So those things were intriguing to me that Harbor Woods was Harbor Woods is only three miles away from my previous school, but it's a world of difference in terms of communities. It's a world of difference. It's a suburb of Metro Detroit. OK, when we got here, of course, we had some racial divide. We had several things we had to deal with, the biggest of which was dealing with a, uh, a minute, uh, a staff that wasn't accustomed to anything that um, was against the status quo. You know, they didn't attend football games, they didn't care about sports. So just getting them endeared to the program was our initial struggle. And then working out all the academic wrinkles, 
we had students that wasn't passing classes. You know, so we had to make sure that we instilled and implemented tutoring programs and so on and so forth. So to answer your question, it was very demanding to change the academics, to change the athletics, to change the community's outlook on the team. Guys that were on the team were embarrassed to wear the school's logo on their chest when we got here. You know, you were the laughing stock of the neighborhood. So we set out to change all of that. And then four years later, it's standing room only in this place. You know, Adidas, Nike, whoever we get, they can't keep apparel in stock. And you have to remember my guys that are pro guys and Chauncey and Brandon and Desmond and Easy, they didn't play for Harper Woods. They played for me at my, my previous location. But you'll come here on a Friday night and you'll see all of these guys at the game cheering as hard as they can when they went to a school that's 2.7 miles away. They're not over there. They're over here with me. Two years, we're going to develop a literacy program. I'm an English language arts reading teacher by trade, and I want to help raise our, our literacy scores. We're going to develop a literacy program don't know what that looks like just yet still doing some research but that's going to happen over the next two years we're going to start to provide summer jobs for these young men and the ability to allow them to earn some wages a lot of these guys have been trapped in academic holes so long that they have to go to summer school which doesn't allow them to make any cash in the summer well now that we've turned the corner on the academic piece it's time to teach these guys how to run landscaping businesses and do summer jobs and things like that. So we're trying to prepare them for the workforce. So in the next couple of years, you will see a big literacy initiative coming from us. You will see a quarterly fundraiser in addition to the golf outing, which we hope becomes our signature event. Off the branches of the tree are all the guys individual athletic. All of them have summer camps. Desmond King has a camp in Iowa and Brandon has a camp in Philly and Cedric's having a camp in Seattle with Chauncey is starting a camp next season, not his rookie year, next season in Dallas. So all of those are branches on the tree. So all of those things have to get off to a great start as well.